Hey, hey, what is going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I am super, super happy to see all of you guys today. Whew, I've had a very long day so far. I was actually in the other uh, unit just a little bit ago uh, because if you saw my last YouTube video, I had a massive mess over there. I had a bunch of inventory I had to get pictures of, uh, categorized, allocated, all that stuff. And I finally got caught up on that. I uh, started on that maybe quarter to six, six this morning. And it's, uh, uh, it's a little after four in the afternoon today uh, by when I'm filming this video. Uh, so it's just a big weight off my shoulders to have all that cleared up uh, and get all my systems in place over there. So it should be smooth sailing uh, in that unit from here on out. Uh, but I actually have swung by here just to wrap a few things up. It was actually going to be a little bit different. I'm actually going to do a review because I came back here to grab something as well. Uh, it's a coat. I'm going to do a review on a coat today. It's going to be somewhat of a review and that's a little bit out of the normal for my channel. Uh, but that's okay. I think uh, in the event of me being genuine and talking about stuff I believe in, I really think it's important to, uh, to make a video like this. So let me actually grab the coat. It's right behind me. This coat right here, this is the Filson Machina Cruiser. This is what I'm going to be talking about today. Right there. And if you've been watching my videos uh, over these past few weeks, you know I've been really trying to simplify my life and my business. Uh, and in effort to do that, uh, I've also simplified my house, just getting my everything in my house in order, um, everything to my health and my diet, really trying to simplify that, and also my wardrobe. So that's actually why I'm going to be talking about this coat here today, because uh, I think it's it's important. Um, and I'll explain all that to you. Uh, I'm going to put the camera on like a tripod so I can do like a I don't know, is it a bird's eye view? Like a, I don't know, like a bird's eye view of the jacket uh, while I talk about it and go over and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, I guess uh, let's just get into it. I'm gonna set the camera up and whew, let's do it. Small change of plans. Uh, I'm being drowned out by train noise and it's just getting dark and uh, I wanna put out a good quality video. I'm actually gonna head back home and review it there. So without further ado, let's go get everything set up and talk about the Filson Mackinac Cruiser Jacket. Well, here it is. This is the famous Filson Mackinac Cruiser Jacket. Uh, and the one that I actually own is the double Mackinac cruiser jacket. There's a single and then a double one, double version. It has a extra layer of wool, hence the double name. Uh, and that's the one that I own. I actually uh, picked this one up second hand uh, for a little over $200, uh, which is uh, quite a bit of savings over the over $500 price tag that they charge now for this. I actually, I believe the uh, the, the single version is 500 and then the double version like this one is over 600. I think it's closer to $650, which is a, oh man, that is a steep, steep price for something, for, for a jacket in general. Um, however, I, this is a very, very special garment and I'm going to talk to you guys about um, if I if I think it's it's worth that investment or not, um, obviously I'm going to advocate to buying it secondhand. Uh, you can save a lot of money that way. But um, the, it, even on the secondhand market, they're still uh, they're they're going to cost you. I mean, they're not giving these things away. So uh, let's actually talk about the jacket. And I guess just to preface this review, it's not really going to be a traditional review. I'm not going to get into the, all the technical features and and um you know the fit and the sizing and all that stuff uh, that's not why i own this jacket um more so i'm just going to be speaking through a lens of my ownership of this coat and uh what it's meant to me uh stuff like that um and also uh in in the event of me simplifying my life i believe that this coat holds a uh, a very powerful philosophy um, I'm, gonna, I'm more going to speak to those things than, than an actual technical review of the jacket. Um, however, uh, I will say um, it's a wool jacket, <laughs> obviously. And, you, and if you don't know the, uh, the wonderful properties of wool, and then um, out of respect to, to anybody who's viewing this jacket, if you 
uh, stumbled across this video, you probably already understand some of the properties of wool, uh, but I'm just going to rifle through them really fast. Obviously, wool is very warm. Uh, it's very, especially this Melton style wool, this very hefty, tight wool. It's uh, it's very uh, heavy duty as well, very abrasion resistant. Like I said, very warm. It's great for a winter garment, um, but it's also very breathable. Um, it breathes really, really well, which is which is very important uh, in, in high quality winter gear. Um, but what the, probably the most important part of wool and one of its most impressive qualities, uh, is that, um, it insulates very well, even when it's wet. And that is something that not a lot of textiles, really any textiles can say, uh, and a lot of manufacturers, uh, and textile manufacturers have been trying to replicate that quality. Uh, with synthetic materials for a long time uh, and there's yet to be anything that can really hold its own against um, uh, natural sheep's wool. So on the outside, the jacket is very basic. Like I said, it is a wool jacket um, and it's uh, probably about what you can expect. It's an old school, very heavy weight, very scratchy, itchy, just hefty wool jacket. Uh, this jacket probably weighs five pounds or so. It is uh, not for the faint of heart. It's, it's very, very heavy and scratchy wool jacket, a very old timey um, heritage style uh, jacket. Uh, but at its core and what I, what I think is the most powerful quality of this jacket and why I think it, it is so valuable uh, is that this jacket is truly at its core, it's uh, almost uh, pure u u utility. Uh, and this is truly a tool of a garment. Uh, and like I said earlier, I'm really trying to simplify my life and just really only keep anything that's uh, necessary or essential or crucial uh, to my life and my lifestyle. And this uh, made the cut, this Filson Mackinac wool jacket. Uh, the reason why it made the cut, uh, like I said, it is just a, a very minimal, no frills utility jacket made out of one of the, uh, in my opinion, uh, uh, highest quality materials uh, that we have access to for uh, garment making. Uh, and it, in this jacket, regardless of how you think it looks, uh, or if you like the style or whatever, like I said, that is not the point of this video. It checks every single box I need this jacket to uh, to fit my lifestyle. So that's why it's making the cut in my wardrobe. I got rid of a ton of jackets and a ton of garments. Uh, but this one, I don't know if I will ever get rid of it, uh, you know, and I could get a lot of money for it on the secondhand market. But um I'm choosing to keep it because I actually believe that this is somewhat of an irreplaceable tool or that, that I, that I have in my life. Uh, and if it dies one day and if it goes, I will probably get another one. <laughs> A little bit about my experience with this jacket and why I think it's so special. So I grew up, uh, in the Midwest. I grew up in, uh, Minnesota. Uh, and in my opinion, and I'm going to be biased because I lived there for most of my life. Uh, Minnesota probably has the most crucial and most brutal weather of all the Midwest states, and I suppose it's up to up to debate. But um, you know, I've lived through a lot of uh, 50 below and 60 below days, uh, and yeah, I've uh, you know I've had uh, a furnace go out on a 50 plus below day before. Um, so I'm gonna you know throw throw a dart out there and say that Minnesota is probably the most uh, brutal of climates for the Midwestern states. Um, so the Filson Company, the CC Filson Company, they're actually out of Seattle. Uh, and where this jacket really shines and where I thought uh, it, 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 where, where it really fit into my life perfectly was my time in the Midwest uh, in the winters of Minnesota. Uh, I was very, very shocked to see a company out of Seattle um, make such i you know high quality garments that could withstand what well i was living in at the time uh one of uh, and i'm going to be a proponent of this and probably till the day i die one of the areas where this jacket really shines um 
is uh, ice fishing, ice angling. Uh, I grew up doing a lot of ice fishing and, and ice angling uh, back in my days in Minnesota, and I still go back frequently. And I, I was actually back for, or I was actually back just uh, maybe a month ago, uh, and I did ice fishing. I, I did some ice fishing on Red Lake uh, in the northern part of Minnesota. Uh, and this is my garment of choice for ice fishing. Um, now, one thing wool is very, very poor at is it is uh, blocking you from the wind. Uh, so uh, whenever I wear this, typically uh, in a windy environment, I will wear a harder shell over it. Uh, but I the, the qualities of wool cannot be understated, especially for a lot of um, uh, brutal outdoor sports such as ice fishing and uh I suppose if you don't know what ice fishing it is, it, and I suppose if you don't know what ice fishing is, it is uh, essentially fishing on a frozen lake, and you drill a hole and you fish through the hole. Uh, that is ice fishing. Uh, and like I said, I grew up doing a lot of it uh, because uh, um, that was the thing to do in the winter in Minnesota, and I and I and I do really enjoy it. Um, but one of the worst things that can, that can happen to you is you fall through the ice, uh, whether the ice be too thin or there's, um, some soft spots or, or what have you. Uh, and I've heard horror stories my entire life. And there's always, um, unfortunately we hear stories of, uh, people around my hometown dying every year or being, uh, um, brutally injured, uh, ice fishing, uh, and that's where wool comes into play, especially this heavy wool, is because uh, it insulates so good when you're wet. I always liked to wear this uh, ice fishing as kind of a uh, insurance policy. If I were to ever fall through the ice, it might, you know, um, minimize my odds of getting hypothermia. Um, granted, it's not uh, foolproof, but every little bit helps. Um, my uncle actually had a very uh, bad horror story of going through the ice uh, while uh, ice fishing on late ice and you know every every everything that could have gone wrong did and um, fortunately he is still around um, it could have been a very very tragic incident um, so uh, you know this like like I said at its core is a true utility tool of a jacket and I think a good way to sum up this jacket is there is a lot of um, you know technical and specialty outerwear for specific jobs, um, and I don't think that there is any job that you can't replace this jacket with and um, still have it uh, perform at a at, at a competent level. That's really the unique ability of this jacket. It is it's really a jack of all trades in terms of outerwear, um, hence why I'm choosing to keep it in my wardrobe because um, I would be happy and, and comfortable choosing this jacket to perform almost any task at hand um, and not have to worry about it um, uh, not performing well. Um, another, in terms of um, my personal experiences with this jacket, where this jacket really excelled was um, when I would uh, uh, work the... Uh, the wood routes with my um, uncle growing up. Uh, in high school and a little bit uh, post high school, I would help my uncle out on his farm. See, he was a farmer. And during the winter months when we when he didn't have to tend to um, as much stuff as he did during the um, summer and spring and fall on his farm, he actually had a, a wood business where um, he would deliver firewood to homes uh, that had wood burning stoves. See, uh, in Minnesota, uh, especially in the, the, the Twin Cities area, Minneapolis and St. Paul and around that area, a lot of those homes are, are, are older, um, you know, early 1900s. And a lot of uh, those homes, they still operate with their original wood burning furnaces. Uh, uh, and my, my uncle living in uh, northern Minnesota um, on his farm in the winter would harvest his own timber on his farm and uh, dry it uh, over a few seasons and he would sell and deliver split firewood to people's houses uh, so they could operate uh, their furnaces during the winter and have heat. Uh, so I would help him with that um, a fair bit amount every year. There was always a good two months out of the year where where business uh, was really good and he would deliver a lot of orders, um, you know, maybe uh, 10, 20 orders a week. Um, and when in, in terms of firewood, that's pretty substantial. Uh, that is a, uh, a big, big, uh, industrial truck size load, 
uh, you know, twice a week or so. We would typically work on the weekends. Uh, and that is where this jacket also really excelled. Um, because the, the, the wood selling season was early to middle winter, uh, where again, it gets brutally cold. Uh, and I, you know, I, I have worked with him, uh, wearing like the Carhartt, uh, duck canvas jackets and stuff. And those are fine too. There's absolutely nothing wrong with those. Um, but when we deliver this firewood and granted he has tools to make uh, life easier on us wheelbarrows and stuff like that but uh, a lot of his customers needed the wood in specific spots uh, like a porch or basements so we could only use tools like a wheelbarrow uh, to get the wood so close and then the rest had to be um, pretty much delivered by hand uh, and when I'm talking firewood I'm, I'm speaking in, in, in terms of cords um, so like a fireplace cord would be a uh, eight foot wide by four foot high stack of firewood and then a, a true cord would be three of those um, basically um, it, it all depends on uh, cubic feet uh, of the wood um, but nonetheless uh, we would have to carry big bundles of wood on our arms uh, you know uh, 12 15 pieces of wood on our arms and carry them uh, and then stack them in the designated spot and um, you know, 12, 15 uh, cut pieces of firewood is heavy and they have sharp edges and, and it's just, a, a, it's, it's really not, there's a, really not a great way to do it. Um, and, you know, like I said, I've, I've worn Carhartt jackets and, and they always did find the cotton ones and uh, they were pretty well abrasion resistance, but there was just something about when I would wear this jacket doing that with these several layers of wool uh, and just something about how this wool would absorb the absorb the weight uh, on that wood it actually made it uh, fairly comfortable to hand hand carry uh, bundles of firewood um, so that is another area where I just uh, this jacket was almost invaluable for that job um, and there's like I said there's never been an instance where this jacket has been able to perform at a at a high enough level uh, to get a job done uh, so that is a big reason why I'm keeping it as well so with that being said this is a 500 to 600 dollar jacket now should you buy one of these 500 dollar jackets um yes and no um, I'm gonna say yes and I'm also gonna say no this decision all depends on your mindset and your lifestyle um, if you were like me uh, three years ago uh, when I didn't understand the value of stuff like this and understand the value of simplicity like I do now in my life, um, I would have said no. I would have said it'd be a, a foolish decision to buy it um, because you probably, um, m you know, maybe would choose more um, less utilitarian jackets over this one. Um, but if you are like I am now uh, with my life and what I've learned and, and, and thriving for a simple uh, lifestyle that uh, uh, ultimately revolves around the philosophies that this jacket implies, then I would absolutely say yes, um, even if you bought it new. Uh, and I know that that's crazy at five to six hundred dollars for a jacket, but this is a garment that I wear, what, maybe 80 to 100 days out of the year. I mean... That's uh, at least what I have been wearing it over my, my past few years of ownership. And um, I mean, uh, that, you know, multiply that by, by 10 years. If you're going to get three to 5,000 wears out of this jacket, I mean, what is $500 then? I mean, that's nothing. Um, um, most people don't get that out of really anything that they wear. So um, I don't know. That's, that's my case for this jacket is that if... Uh, if you're really looking for a, a, a lifelong tool that uh, you can basically throw at any job at hand and it's going to perform uh, competently, uh, then I would recommend buying this jacket. Uh, and like I said, uh, with my lifestyle, everything has been, uh, I've been much happier uh, and I've been way more efficient and way more productive now that my life is just simpler. I have less things to worry about um, with this jacket being an example. I can just uh, grab it and go. And not have to worry all right so there you go there's my review of the Filson Mackinac wool cruiser jacket uh, and like I said uh, 
you know, this is out of the normal for my channel. Uh, don't be surprised if I continue to do videos like this once in a while. Like I said, if there's something that I really believe in uh, and I wanna be as genuine as possible with you guys, I'm probably gonna document it in one way or another. Uh, and this is a good example like that because I've been, I've been sharing with you how I've been trying to simplify my life. And um, this jacket really encompasses a lot of the philosophies that um, I, I adhere to uh, with, with, with my endeavors in doing that. So. With that being said, there's my review of the Filson Mackinac Wool Cruiser Jacket. I appreciate all you guys. I hope you have a fantastic rest of the day. Uh, more, I guess, uh, run-of-the-mill videos coming soon. Uh, but with that being said, be good to one another, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.